What if Trump is the deadly wound? No, I'm serious. Hear me out. Don't consider this a necessarily a Bible study or a teaching or a prophecy or anything like that. I just want you to consider. Thank you for joining me at Berean Bible Journeys, where we use the context and the original languages to verse map the word. Today, we're going to be verse mapping Revelation 13 and 3, but we're actually going to look at the whole chapter really quickly. The name of this verse map is The Deadly Wound from Revelation 13 and 3. And as I said, we're going to look at the whole entire chapter. It's not that long. So here we are in Revelation 13, and I printed out the whole chapter on from Loose Leaf Bible on this nice, clean, white sheet of paper because I was going to go with just using my Bible, but as you see, um, it's kind of scribbled all over, and uh, I was afraid you wouldn't be able to see that. So we're going to, we can look at the whole chapter here in one glance. And what I want to point out right off the bat is here at the end, this is the end of chapter 13. Talks about the mark of the beast, right? And he's causing everyone to receive a mark. And we know that the defining characteristic of the mark of the beast is that that the person that has it is able to buy and sell or vice versa. If they do not have it, they are not able to buy or sell. So that's the defining characteristic. And we see that happening right now in our world and you have the whole camp that says well it's not actually it yet um, if it is not it's pretty close and um, somebody better hurry up and jump in there if this isn't it because um, it sure looks like it walks like a duck talks like a duck as they say it might be a duck if you are brand new here let me refer you to a couple of different videos on this channel um, this first mapping one right here talks about how the mark could be spiritual or physical or possibly both. Who will worship the Antichrist or the beast? Um, this one speaks about does all mean all in the verse that says all will worship him. This one speaks about the Antichrist or the beast being a system and not necessarily just one person. And then finally, you need to know about the strong delusion that is being put out in the world right now so that you can avoid it. And I just found this this morning, and this is Israel's Green Pass stipulations that they have on their website. And if you look at this, any reference to the vaccine gets translated as mark or sign. You will have to have this mark for this amount of time. This is explaining how long their mark will be valid from such a time as they have the illness or get their vaccine or whatever. Anyway, the evidence is stacking up. So we have, here we are at the end of chapter 13. Well, what about the rest of chapter 13? What about this first beast from the sea and the deadly wound and the 42 months and the beast from the earth and the image of the beast? I'll put the link to this video as well about the images that they want to create across the world in 2021. If we're already over here, then where are these things? So let's look here. We're over here at where people are being told that they cannot buy and sell if they do not have this certain mark. So I want to present this theory of mine to you that yes, this has already occurred all of chapter 13, and we are here. But we're also going to focus on this verse. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. And, you know, we have this description of this fantastical beast in Revelation with all the heads and the horns and the crowns. And, you know, that used to scare me to death growing up. Like, what is that thing going to come out of the ocean? and eat us all. So <laughs> we're going to look at this. Okay, so if we verse map this, these are some of the words broken out here into their expanded definition. So one of the heads is like a cornerstone or a ruler or a lord, it says. So one of the heads of this beast was, moodle, was wounded mortally. 
maimed to death physically or spiritually. And the wound, the stripes, blow, the affliction, the plague of death, was then healed or restored, a physical condition that was reversed. It was restored to health. And marveled and wondered and admired and amazed and awestruck and astonished out of one sentences, all the world afterward gets behind and follows this beast, the wild animal that entraps prey and destructs. So if you look at the context of the first two verses in that chapter, you have this beast that rose up out of the sea, out of many people. It has seven heads, and these names have the name of blasphemy on them, ten horns with ten crowns, like a leopard, which represents Germany, a bear, Russia, and a lion, Britain. And the dragon, Satan, gave them authority and power and a seat to rule. I have some other videos. If you're brand new here, you might want to watch these, the beast system, the mark, the image of the beast, so that you can get an idea that maybe the Antichrist or the beast is not this one single person. Let's say it's a system with some major headliners in there, perhaps not one single actor, okay? Which I always thought it was. I mean, you know, I watched Left Behind, didn't you? Babylon, the Bible speaks of this Babylon system throughout all of Revelation and in Daniel 7. And it's a figurative city, okay? This beast is made up of different countries and rulers and entities. And this Babylonian system has been ruling since the time of Nimrod and the Tower of Babel, I have another video called Come Out of Her. If you go watch that, you will see the history of this evil system. There have always been Antichrist and the Antichrist spirit that twists the word and perverts the gospel and profanes his law and his holy days. And, you know, we're told in John, 1 John 4 and 3, that the Antichrist is in the world already, even back then at the time of Christ. But there is one, one ultimate Antichrist which is Satan, that old serpent, the dragon. And in the last days, this Antichrist system will be revealed. And we are told to come out of her, okay? Separate thyself from this system. In Revelation 13, we see this beast, this Antichrist system rising, okay? And the last evil thing that this system enacts before being destroyed by God Almighty is the mark of the beast. So we can see this becoming clearer as it's coming to fruition. So where are we? When I started looking at this, I'm looking over here at this mark of the beast part, and we can see the technology is available now to mark our hands and our foreheads. Yes, there's one video that I have called a mark in the right hand or the forehead that says um, that it could be a spiritual mark, and it could be. But we can see this happening where this we have this technology available where they could also physically mark our hands and our foreheads, right? Some countries have already locked down their citizens and are requiring this certain thing in order for them to buy and sell. And since the patent is already approved for this number right here, and it includes the technology to mark you with bioluminescent light known as luciferase, we must consider the possibility that we are well into Revelation chapter 13 with prophecy coming true. All right, so we've got this beast out of the sea and it comes up and we already talked about that. It's a beast system of government and country. And Satan, the Antichrist, is told to us in Revelation 20 and 2 that that is the dragon. Okay, and we saw, it says we saw this deadly wound of his. Now, I, I, like I said, I watched The Left Behind, and I fully saw that guy that was indwelt by Satan, and then he got shot in the head, and or whatever happened, and then he rose from the dead, and then everybody was like, ah, oh, it's Christ, we're going to follow after him. Maybe not so much it's going to be like that, but more there's this system that got a deadly wound. Then it goes through the time timeline here of 1260 days, 42 months. Revelation, I have learned, is not in order, okay? It's not then this, then this, then this, then this, all the way through. It actually repeats itself several times. The, tor the story gets told different ways. Um, we know that's not, this is not the only time that God has done that. So in Revelation 13, this is kind of like an outline. The first beast rises, 
and the beast is made up of ruling ent entities or countries or kings. One of the heads of this beast, one of the rulers of the countries in the Antichrist system has received a deadly wound. And those whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life are all amazed and marvel and wander after and get behind and follow the beast. And then the second beast rises, the second beast rises and picks up right where the first beast left off. Same power, and it resurrects, in a sense, the first beast. And the second beast causes the earth dwellers to worship the image of the first beast. And the second beast launches the mark of the beast and restricts people's ability to buy and sell who will not take the mark. Okay. So what happened in here in between the first beast and the second beast? Well, the beast had a deadly wound that was healed. So I started looking at this, the last trump, right, is a iconic symbol of the end. Trumpet is, of course, a sign of the end time. There is a holy feast day called Feast of Trumpets or Day of Trumpets. That is the day and the hour which no man knows that will probably herald the coming back of Christ. It's also when all of the kings were crowned. So that is something that will get fulfilled, I think, on the Day of Trumpets. We recently had a presidential team here in America called Trump and Pence. And I don't know if God has a sense of humor or what, but you can't escape the fact that all of this is now happening after Trump Pence has been in office. And we also have some a group of people known as the Gates. I call them the gates of hell, that are helping create this mark. They are fully creating and implementing this thing. And the next advancement of the mark, if some people say, oh, this is not it because it doesn't have this or this or this, or this can't be the mark because um, this hasn't happened or well, okay, whatever. But the next advancement of this mark is created with is the dot luminescence tattoo that is created with an enzyme called luciferase. And I have another video about that. I mean, it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, talks like a duck. I mean, it might be a duck, right? So what about this man called Gates who preaches depopulation through vaccines, whose foundation has made it their mission to help poor, dying, malnutrition children by vaccinating them repeatedly with his free vaccines? What about Dr. Fauci? whose nickname means, who is, his name actually means sickle, as in the angel that thrusts its sickle into the harvest, the evil from the earth. Consider the four companies that are creating these sharks and compare the four angels in Revelation that held back the wind until the servants of Yah were sealed in their foreheads. Four companies, four angels that enact death upon a third of the planet. Is it a coincidence that the shark contains ingredients that defile your body, your temple, the third temple, that the most high, the, the most high considers these things an abomination? The abomination of desolation comes to mind. And there are many reports that reactions include severe menstrual in issues and miscarriage, horrid side effects and death. The abomination of desolation actually means, desolation actually means barrenness, barrenness, um, depopulation. I mean, you have to look at these words. So we had this beast system that promoted lawlessness, abortion, it covered up trafficking, pedophilia, war, drugs, among other blasphemous agendas that have just gotten worse and worse and worse. And this beast system was long in the making, been taking a long time to set this all up. And it was well on track to completely enslave humanity. Um, and then an upset came when Trump was elected instead of the possible for Babylon. All right? Remember, that was a complete upset. They, they, they said there is absolutely no way that Trump will ever become president. That, that was what they thought. Um, they, and they were very cocky 
and very sure that they were going to walk right on with this agenda of, you know, it was, it was um, agenda 21 was the, uh, it was another year before that. And then it didn't happen. And then, so they changed it to agenda 21 and then eek, Trump happened. And then they've changed it now to agenda 2030. So the agenda is there. You, you need to go look at it. You have this second beast that has arisen and he picked right back up where the first beast left off. Only the second beast is worse and he wants to re restrict your ability to provide for your family and buy and sell and visit and get medical care. He wants to restrict your ability, ability to have your job if you won't do this. If you don't meet this one certain condition of this system. And what you have is a beast that was and then was not. And yet it is. So what wounded the beast? Right? Well, I think it was Trump. If you haven't followed me yet, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this is not a teaching video. This is a discussion video. I'm saying it's possible that Trump was the deadly wound. Now, I know there's a whole faction out there that says that Trump is the Antichrist because he's well-loved and has a huge following. Well, it takes more than that to declare somebody as that. And anyway, you know, it's a system here that we're dealing with. The, the ultimate Antichrist is Satan. His system is being revealed. So Trump, think about this. He put a serious wound into trafficking and child trafficking and human trafficking of all kinds. He put a serious wound into the wars. There were no new wars started, remember, when Trump was president. There was a serious wound to Agenda 21 and to the Paris Accord. And the first thing he did when he got in the office was yank us out of the Paris Accord. And people went nuts, right? And one of the first things that Biden did when he got back in was put us right back in there, right? Right back in the Paris Accord. Put a serious wound to Christian persecution. We know that that was, we, we were doing so much better when Trump was the president. Now it's, it's off the rails. Serious wound to the enemies of Israel. There was treaties being signed and peace de being declared. And, um, before you say that the Antichrist makes a peace treaty with Israel for seven years, that is not what that scripture says. It says he will confirm a the covenant with many. It doesn't say anything about Israel. It doesn't even say who he is. It, he in that verse could actually be God or Christ confirming his land covenant with many for seven years. Just another aside. Anyway, you know these things that happened. There was a serious wound to oil dependency for our country, which Biden has now reversed. Um, serious wound to Obamacare, whose end game was socialistic medicine. And if you look at any history, that does not work. And it only makes slaves and, and poor people. A serious wound to the abortion industry. Boy, he did some great things defunding Planned Parenthood and taking money away from and, and, and stopping us from having to pay for abortions with our tax dollars. All that is reversed now um, within the first month of the, the, uh, the uh, second, you know, entity getting back in there. Serious wound to abortal fetal tissue and vaccines. And I had known that for a long time. So I was so glad when that came out and, and they flipped their lid because Trump wanted to stop aborted fetal tissue being used in vaccines. That has been reversed by the current presidency. There was a serious wound to the Formica industry with lower drug prices. That happened. That has been reversed. A serious wound to communism and socialism. And we know that, that we are barreling like a freight train towards communism in this country right now. There was a serious wound to the destruction and weakening of our military. That has 
picked right back up where it left off. Now they are using this test, um, scientific test on our military, and it is wounding many of them. There was a serious wound to our open border policy, which um, today is September the 18th, and there are videos everywhere of just thousands of people lined up and coming across our open border. Um, there was a serious wound to the oppression of our American farmers, and um, that is going out the window now. I've heard of farmers being forced to destroy and plow under their crops this year because they want to induce fear and chaos and famine. And there was a serious wound to the liberal left Supreme Court. Which, you know, we recently just had Texas that came out with their heartbeat bill and the current administration considered that a tragedy that babies were not going to be killed after six weeks or after their heartbeat was detected. That was a tragedy to them. If that's not anti-Christ, I don't know what it is. I'm not going to belabor the point. I mean, you guys can go look at, look this up and you know what's happening in our world and in our country. And I just wanted to just throw this out there at you because I um, want to see what you thought. If maybe Trump is the deadly wound. This is the whole chapter of Revelation 13. And, you know, you need one of those big arrows that says, you are here. We are here or swiftly approaching here. And so we've, we've had to have somehow missed the beast and it being wounded. And the beast, the second beast, to get to this point. Do a summation here of this entire thing. And I might do a longer video that goes along with this to explain in more detail. But if we just sum this up, we have this beast that can, comes out of the sea in Revelation 13 and 3, and it has these heads, these horns, and it was wounded to death, and then it was, was healed, right? There's one of the heads of this beast that is wounded. So if you aren't aware that there's a whole worldwide system that is ruling the world, that is is not made up of nice people. Um, it's <clears throat> Babylon is what that is. That is um, what we're dealing with here. You might want to go research that a little bit, but say one of these heads of Babylon has been wounded. And here's the worldwide, some pictures, images of these, this worldwide system. You know, the UN, the G7 conference, um, the Paris Accord, these these world organizations that are deciding things for us. So we had this man become president. He became one of the heads of the beast. And there was a lot of speculation at that time. Oh my gosh, he's the Antichrist. Remember that? I had actually forgotten how much speculation there was about that when he first got elected. I and mean, then it kind of died down. And you remember at the end of his term, there was absolutely no way they said that Trump could ever become president. So there's a whole video compilation of uh, these heads and Hollywood people saying absolutely Trump will never be president. But he was much to their chagrin. And then after Trump became president even, remember this shadow government, shadow government of Obama following Trump around, meeting with heads of different countries and still trying to rule from behind the scenes, they even bought a house right there in Washington. That's, that's against like protocol really. Um, and then kind of lurked around in the shadows. So the reason so many people got behind Trump was because he offered hope. He offered, people saw a way out from under this tyranny and this rule. Um, they saw a way of justice that was coming back to the forefront. Um, they saw evil things being addressed. Um, 
they saw religious religious freedom and freedom of speech being championed again. Um, it was it was looking grim for the beast. I mean, he was uh, he was taking a taking a blow there. Remember, the only other person we know of that actually spoke out against the beast was this man here, and we know what happened to him. So we saw this head wounded, right? And then it was healed. Here comes Biden back on the scene. And this was a quote. You saw in Trump an unwinding of actions and policies of the Obama administration, says Mark O'Gorman, a pro professor of political science and environmental studies at Maryville College in Tennessee. And now Biden is starting to rewind. He is rewinding and resurrecting the first beast. Feeling a little nostalgic about the Obama area in the White House, President-elect Joe Biden is bringing it back. Biden formally introduced his newest slate of employees and appointees to lead government agencies and policy making next year. And the list looks like a reunion of veterans of Barack Obama's time in office. Hmm. Throughout the four years of Donald Trump's presidency, Joe Biden spent significant time reassuring American allies around the world that Trump's America is not who we are and pledging we'll be back. We'll be back to what? They were pledging that they were going to be back into the system. Like, this is just a temporary wound. We're going to be back. Trump's 2016 election seemed to have been the final nail in the coffin for the idea of a truly liberal international order with the U.S. as a benevolent leader. From his first days in office, Trump was on a mission to roll back U.S. US commitments to myriad organizations, deals, and relationships around the world. Yes, he was. He was on a mission to get us out of those contracts and organizations that were part of the beast system. In his first 100 days in office, Biden signed more than 60 executive actions, 24 of which are direct reversals of Trump's policies. And then we saw Biden's first uh, appearance at the G7 conference, G7 just happens to stand for a group of seven. Remember, the beast has seven heads. Um, and this says the U.S. global approval rating has improved significantly with Trump gone and Biden at the helm, particularly among close allies in Europe. And you see, there was to be a meeting at Camp David of this G7 in 2020. And it was canceled. And then it was, it was not held until the next year when Mr. Biden could be in charge. So when I started looking at this, I mean, like, could these people be the first and the second beast? I mean, this seems kind of like a little outrageous. And I, I felt a little bit of hesitation at saying such a thing, even though if you Google, Obama beast. There are lots of speculations about that being true. And so I did Google that. And the first thing that came up, like knocked me on my rear. And I don't know if you have connected this or not, but Obama's car that was created for him during his presidency. Do you see this right here? What's the name of his car? His car is called The Beast. That was the first car like that that was created for Obama, was presented to him, nicknamed The Beast. It's 18 feet long. I don't know why they wanted to put that in there, but it just happens to be six plus six plus six. Just a little added aside there. And here's uh, Obama and Biden riding in the beast. Here he is. He arrived. It says departure from tradition. He arrived at his in his own highly secured bomb proof vehicle, the beast. I about fell out. And then he said at the end of his term, next year I've got to give it up. I'm saying goodbye 
to the beast. And then this article, Joe Biden gets the beast, right? Okay. And then last but not least, this is Biden's inauguration, where the news reported that at least seven heavily armored presidential limo limos nicknamed the beast were seen driving through Washington, D.C. It is not clear which beast Biden and Heron were, Harris were each in. <laughs> I'm done now. So if you look at the scripture that talks about this second beast, Revelation 13 and 11, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So if we look at that just a little closer, I beheld another beast coming up or rising from a lower place to a higher place. You know, Biden used to be the vice president and then he became the president out of the earth, a country, this inhabited region. And he had two horns, which are symbolized as instrument of power, like a lamb, like an innocent, gentle lamb. He's so frail, you know, and he spake, which this can also be translated whispered. As a dragon, which can also be translated as a snake. That word dragon, a dragon or huge serpent, exercising his subtle, indirect impact on heathen governments and powers and accomplishing his hellish agenda from behind the scenes. A type of serpent was believed to have incredible insight and able to spot prey in any hiding place. So. I don't know if you, I'm um, surely you have seen this, but I'm going to show you the video real quick. Let me get it here. We'll be getting checks in the mail that are consequential this week for child care. Who gets to judge whether your vote counted after it's been cast? Think about it. This misses it all. We're going to be getting checks in the mail that are consequential this week for child care. A lot has been happened already. Number one, it was about who gets to judge whether your vote counted after it's been cast. Think about it. What dismisses it all? So she might have, I wrote the bill. I did what happened. Why would I not be for it? Employers can't find workers. I said, yeah. Okay, enough of that. So, yeah. I just had this uh, idea. I it could be wrong. I can be wrong. That's okay. I'll, I will admit it if, if something changes and blows this theory right out of the water. But um, for now, um, it really looks like that Trump was the, the deadly wound that took out one of the heads of the beast. And now that wound has been healed um, and patched up and put back together and is on its way to continue the agenda of the beast. So here we are. Now you are witnessing this resurrected beast as he is marching forward and trampling over the top of God's people. Anybody that gets in the way. You know, if you get in the way of the beast, you might end up in prison, um, being held in solitary confinement with no charges pressed against you and no speedy trial like um, 600 plus people are right now. Um, that is amazing to me. But, you know, all the world is wandering after the beast and saying, who can... Who can stand against the beast? So uh, thank you for joining me and have a blessed day.
Okay, so you were listening to me talk about the beast come out of the sea. And what did you think of? Well, I thought that literally the beast was like Bowser. Who's Bowser? On, you know Mario? Yeah. Well, he's on Leo. He's the bad guy. Oh, so it would look like, you think, Bowser. And he has those two horns. Don't right. you know how he has those two horns? I could see that. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Say it again.